What's up, guys, and welcome to One Take. Today, we're talking about Devs, Episode 4. It's going to be full of spoilers, so if you haven't watched the episode yet, do that, and then check out this video. And before we jump into the recap, just a quick reminder that if you're enjoying these videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified the next time we release a video. I'm Gil, here with my brother, Alun. Hey. Let's jump into Devs, Episode 4. The episode starts out with devs in their golden box. There's a tremor. Stuart and Lyndon are kind of thrown by it, but Stuart points out that Katie didn't seem scared. And he's here essentially implying that Katie looked into the future and knew that this tremor was coming. And I think this is a callback to a previous episode where Katie calls out Stuart and Lyndon for not following the rules. And then Stuart makes a comment like, Follow the rules coming from her. <laughs> so clearly, Stuart and Lyndon have their doubts about to what degree Katie really plays by the rule book they set out. And shortly after that, we'll find out that they're not wrong in thinking that because Katie walks in on Forrest breaking one of the rules. He's looking into the future. At first, it's kind of unclear what he's looking at. We see a sort of blurry image of somebody crawling or swimming how did you interpret that image the first time it popped up honestly i think i realized pretty quickly that was lily crawling to her death yeah it took me a sec well until they pointed it out explicitly mm. i had no idea what i was looking at um basically katie calls him out for his rule breaking forrest says they as in Lyndon stewart and the rest of the folks there they know not to break the rules and they know we break them and i guess he's fine with that <laughs> Katie asks him why he's doing it, and Forrest says he's scared. He says he doesn't doubt the physical universe, but what if we're magical? And he posits, what if we look one minute into the future, and we see that you, Katie, are going to cross your arms, and then you decide you're not going to do it. F the trams, or the tram lines. Tram lines. The tram lines. So we learned about this concept, the tram lines, which I guess are sort of Sort of like train tracks, you know, that the you see where the future is going and it's inevitable. So what if we see, Katie, that you're going to cross your arms, you decide you're not going to do it. What would happen? Katie explains, I think her direct quote was, cause precedes effect, effect leads to cause. The future is fixed in exactly the same place as the past. The tram lines are real. Essentially, Lily will die. And that's where it's spelled out for us that Forrest was watching Lily, 48 hours in the future, dying. Now, he's wondering what would happen if we looked a minute into the future and decided not to follow the future. Why don't they do that test, do you think? I don't know. It, I, it's kind of weird because the same, whatever issue he's afraid would, would arise could also arise by looking at the future that he's looking at with Lily. Right, so. It's just a couple of days later. Yeah. Right? So it's... Well, the, the the question is going to be put to the test regardless because now we're going to see what happens two days from from now and see whether or not Lily dies. Yeah. And you could say the difference is with the crossed arms, the question was what if Katie purposefully doesn't cross her arms? Mm -hmm. Here, maybe Forrest is saying, well, I'm not going to interfere. But who knows? Maybe he was the one that kills Lily and by simply seeing that's the future, he's already altered it. Yeah, especially because... He's pretty directly involved in her life right now. So it's not like, so him just looking at this footage, you know, prediction of her future, right. it, there's a really good chance it's going to affect it now. Right. He might not go out of his way to tell Kenton, like, hey, if you were thinking about killing Lily, don't do it. Yeah. But he has that knowledge in his head. It's going to affect his behavior. I think one thing we saw for sure this episode is that Forrest's emotions very much guide his decision making. And here he says he's scared. He's scared of what the result of that experiment would be. He might literally not be doing that for that exact reason. He's just afraid of mm -hmm. what would happen. He's afraid of the answer. That was kind of my read on it. But we've got four more episodes to see if there's another reason or see what happens with Lily and we can see an actual example of this experiment. Um, so let's leave Devs for a little bit and let's go through Lily's storyline before we come back to Devs. Lily wakes up. It turns out she stayed at Jamie's place. 
And Jamie clearly still likes her, right? Yeah. <laughs> he they have a little bit of a back and forth where she sort of questions his motives. He claims it's chivalry, and then he says, you know, I'm starting to remember what it was like being in a relationship with you. But he definitely likes her. <laughs> uh, and I think, you know, I kept wondering, why are they showing us so much of Jamie's feelings towards Lily? Not that they're focusing a whole lot on it, but I think it's really just to give him a little bit more character and make us care a little bit more when he dies, or assuming that's what happened at the end of this episode. But we'll get to that. Uh, Jamie thinks Lily should call the police and report Sergey's murder. She says, we shouldn't do that. You've got to stop thinking of, is it Amiya or Amaya? Amaya. Th- Amaya. You've got to stop thinking of Amaya as a company. You've got to treat him like the mob. Now, I agree with her, but I don't think she's exactly followed that advice. <laughs> if they were the mob, I think she should have just walked away from the whole thing. Yep. Though I guess if she did that, wouldn't be as much of a show. <laughs> <laughs> but no, to, you know, on a, more seriously, she's human, right? She's got a lot of conflicting emotions here. She probably is coming to this realization, I need to be more careful than I've been. You know, and that's battling this Goliath of a company just murdered my boyfriend. So I think the kind of self-contradiction, the flip-flopping is just, I think it's realistic. Kenton shows up and takes Jamie to a doctor, a psychiatrist. Katie or um, Lily has a conversation with the psychiatrist. By the end of it, Kenton checks in with the doctor, and the doctor, he sees through Lily. He doesn't believe that she has uh, schizophrenia, doesn't believe she's had previous episodes. He can see that she's lying. He says he can't be 100% sure, but it's a high probability which felt like he was very much using Dev's speak. Yeah. I don't know if he's just used to talking to Kenton and used to talking to Forrest, so it's starting to rub off on him. Also, I like this scene because I like that I like this show the most when it doesn't mess around, where they don't have this long, drawn-out tension of when are they going to realize that this whole psychiatric issue Lily has is a ruse? When are they going to find it out? Here, like that, the psychiatrist sees right through it. Yeah. That's when the show's at its best, when it feels like it's kind of smarter writing than we typically see. You know, we see competent people. They're not doing dumb stuff all the time. The psychiatrist would see through it, and he does see through it, and I like that. Uh, Meanwhile, Jamie cleans the apartment. So again, (laughs) he definitely likes it, right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) There's no doubt. Yeah, and I love when he uh, when he shuts the door to his apartment and that yeah, that was falls. awesome. <laughs> uh, so Kenton drives away from the psychiatrist with Lily in the car, and then he tells her, "I know everything." Now, when he said that, when he said that, did you think he was going to come clean about? I know you're faking this whole schizophrenic thing, and it was all a ruse, or did you know which direction he was going to go? Uh, they got me. I, th- I thought he was going to be like, we know you're faking and yeah. try to use a fear tactic. Right. Hunter. Yeah, same here. And though, so what he does say is, I know what's going on. I know you're psychotic. You're a high suicide risk. I'm going to take you for involuntary confinement, basically. You need to be in a mental institution. Now, when he said that, do you think the legit plan was to take her to some kind of mental institution? Or was he going to kill her right now? Um, I don't know. What was this forty? How how long was this since uh, the prediction? I don't think it was forty eight hours. Yeah, it didn't feel like it. Yeah, I don't think we've hit that point yet. Yeah, I don't know. But clearly, she believed that he was going to kill her, right? Yeah. If not now, then this was one step in the process of killing her. So she grabs the wheel. For a second, I thought she was going to jump out of the car. I saw her kind of looking at the road. Yeah, it looked like she was considering it. Yeah, and I don't know what's safer. Probably the way she went. She (laughs) crashed. She grabbed the wheel and forced him to take a sharp turn and crash into the barrier on the side of the highway, which I thought was pretty awesome. That was a great shot, by the way. When she was on the highway, you could still see the cars like swinging by oh looked, that moment very where she real is the moment where she's kind of dazed and a car goes right in mm-hmm. front of her and she has to sort of back up was one of my favorite moments yeah. of the episode so she kind of stumbles off runs away 
and then he stumbles off, kind of goes after her. It takes him a little bit longer to regain consciousness. And then it, and then Lily goes home <laughs> and calls the police. Yeah. Why? Why <laughs> did she do that? Yeah. You know, it's pretty ob- in this world, I think it's pretty obvious they're going to have connections to the cops. Although at the same time, it kind of bothered me cuz it's such a trope. I would have liked for them not to have a connection in the police mm-hmm. and then see how actual police would actually try to deal with this. Well, to but, be fair, I don't know. So you're basically saying, so we'll just, what happened sure. is she calls the cops, the cops show up. Well, she calls the cops to report Sergey's murder. They show up, but they show up to arrest Lily for reckless endangerment mm-hmm. when she crashed the car. So you're reading that as the cops are in on it with Amaya. It is possible that the cops are not in on it because if you reported to the police that this woman, Lily grabbed the wheel of my car, drove into the barrier of a highway, there's plenty of evidence to support that. I mean, Mm -hmm. it is what happened. So whether or not the cops are in on it, I think they could have sold them. I think they could have gotten them to arrest Lily. Yeah. All right. That's true. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) They also went pretty out of their way to set up Sergei's murder. So I think it's. It, I'm sure they have power and they could pull strings if they mm-hmm. need to, but I don't know if they're pulling them here. Um, but she calls the cops, and the reason I was so kind of dumbfounded by it is, A, yes, Amaya is huge. Maybe they have connections with the police. But even beyond that, you just crashed a car, and all physical evidence would indicate that Sergey Sergey's death was a suicide. It's already been investigated by the cops. It's pretty clear that you lied to Amaya about your history because I'm sure the government can look into that and see you're saying you're psychotic. There's no records to back that up. It would be very easy. I think if Lily calling the cops, she's the one who's going to look guilty. And I was just flabbergasted that she went that route. Mm -hmm. I wonder if this is part of some scheme from her. She has something clever up her sleeve, kind of like we saw last episode where she tricked Kenton and the rest of them. But that seems unlikely, especially now that the authorities are involved. So I just kind of scratch my head. You could, if there is nothing more to this, I think you have to chalk it up to just her being emotional, backed into a corner. She's about to be killed by Amaya. So she might think, you know what? Even if the cops are going to think I'm guilty, if I'm in prison or being held by cops, it's going to be tougher for Forrest and Kenton to get to me and kill me. That could be the, the equation she's doing there. Uh, after Lily gets taken away, now to be locked up again for mental health, then Kenton shows up, <sighs> says, hello, Jamie, and then menacingly <laughs> walks towards him. <laughs> and I think we see him attack Jamie in the background. So he was, he was there with the cops, right? And the, yeah, the cops so. just let him hang out with them while they're arresting her. Right. Kind of weird. Well, it might be weird, but I have some real world experience where I've seen this sort of thing happen. Really? Where, well, not me exactly, but our brother, (laughs) he had a bike stolen from him and they set up a sting operation where the person who stole the bike was trying to sell it on Craigslist. So the cops had my brother agree to go buy the bike. (laughs) And then the cops showed up where they agreed to meet for the bike purchase and they let our brother sit in the car and watch the guy get arrested. That's pretty cool. So it's been known to happen in real life. Hmm. Anyway, is Jamie dead? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we saw him without a shirt on. He did look like he was in pretty decent shape. And Kenton's pretty beat up right now. I mean, I, I hope Kenton learned his lesson from that knife fight earlier <laughs> and that he's more prepared this time. So don't bring nothing to a knife fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or bring a gun to a knife fight. Yeah, I think Jamie's dead. Do you think we're going to see a struggle or episode five? It just begins with the presumption that he's dead. Maybe some quick confirmation that he's Presum- see a body. Presumption. Damn. I kind of hope he's alive. I don't know. I feel bad for him, but I think you're right that he's dead. <laughs> uh, overall, that's that's everything we see of Lily and Jamie in this episode. I will say I'm pro- probably less interested in Lily's storyline at this point mainly just because she's up against this huge Goliath of a company, Amaya. 
it feels like there's no chance of her succeeding versus the first couple episodes where she was just starting to sniff around. She seemed pretty competent. She was putting things together. And I was getting ready to watch her go after Forrest and see a little bit of a cat and mouse game. But it seems like there's no chance of her winning here. And I can see that could work well where you make the odds so against her that it makes it more compelling because we see her mm -hmm. start to rise to the challenge. But here, it feels like they've gone so far in that direction of making it impossible that I'm starting to lose interest in it. I'm interested on one layer because now we have that ticking clock of we know she's supposed to die in less than 48 hours at this point. And I'm super curious to see what happens when we hit the 48-hour mark. And I have a feeling the closer we get to that, the more interesting her storyline is going to be. Mm -hmm. But right now, when we're in the golden devs room is when I'm more on yeah. the edge of my seat. Yeah, I was most interested in everything that was happening with Lyndon in this episode, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And speaking of Lyndon, speaking of devs, let's jump back to there. We see Lyndon put a pair of headphones on and get really excited. She even says the S word. And not the S word, not Stuart the S word, but the curse word. <laughs> She gets really excited. At first, I thought she was arguing with Stuart. There was no audio, and you see them kind of yelling at each other. But then they hug, and uh, then we learn why. Because in the next scene, we see Forrest, Katie, and a crowd of other devs behind Lyndon, and Lyndon basically demos what he was able to piece together. So the issue Lyndon was facing is that we're trying to hear audio from you know 2,000 years ago, and it's coming in all garbled. But when Lyndon decides to use the many worlds interpretation of reality, reassuring Forrest, still deterministic, don't worry, but many worlds, all of a sudden it works. And instead of Forrest being really happy about this, he gets really angry and fires Lyndon. His reasoning is that, yes, we're hearing a crystal clear Jesus, but it's not our Jesus. This could be a Jesus with one hair, one extra hair, <laughs> or a thousand extra hairs, or it could be a Jesus from another reality. And says Lyndon is undermining his whole goal there. You're fired, but here's $10 million. <laughs> so I think we've seen Forrest get emotional before, um, but it, it does make me wonder, how did he get so far being so emotional in his decision-making and should Lyndon have known better not to question him in that moment and not to go the many worlds route? Forrest has been pretty clear that he doesn't want to hear anything about the, that route. Right. That was set up in episode one mm -hmm. when he was talking to Sergey even. Yep. And Sergey says, why can't we predict this organism's movements 10 seconds, more than 10 seconds into the future? And f he says one reason is that there could be a reality where we do predict it and we happen to be in the one where we don't. Forrest did not want to hear about multiple realities. So we know he doesn't like it. And you have to assume he's made similar comments to Lyndon and Stewart. Mm -hmm. Now, it could be that he's getting worse. Maybe he wasn't this bad. We don't know how long it's been since his daughter died. So it could be a pretty recent phenomenon. And it may be... A month ago, you could talk about the many worlds interpretation, but lately it's a touchy subject. So he could be falling apart and getting worse. And that could also be why he's managed to be so successful. He's held it together. He's done really well. He's a genius. And the emotional weight of his daughter is starting to get to him. And like I said, it could have been a recent occurrence. I don't know if they've given us anything that would tell us how long it's been. So he could be getting worse. And Lyndon... It hasn't been long enough where he's in this emotional state that Lyndon could have predicted that response. Mm -hmm. I mean, considering the whole company is called the Maya and they've built all these buildings, true. I imagine she must have been gone for a while now. Yeah, true. It is confirmed later in the episode, of shortly after this, that Amaya is the name of his daughter, which I mm -hmm. think we all suspected. Yeah. And so this company was likely created as a sort of a tribute to his daughter, or mm -hmm. at least he named it after his daughter. So you're right, she's probably been gone a while. But maybe just whatever goal he's trying to achieve, and I don't think it's entirely clear exactly what he's trying to achieve here. I mean, we know he's trying to predict the future and the past with ultimate clarity, 
but exactly why I think is unclear. And the fact that it's taking so long to get there and the fact that he's starting to have doubts, you know, he questions, are we magical? So I think he's starting to have doubts about whether or not they can get there. That may be getting to him. It's just, it's just a slow boil. So after Forrest fires Lyndon, Lyndon takes some time leaving and Stuart approaches Lyndon, says to go. He says that uh, Forrest is going to kill you. And I love that moment. First off, we love Stuart. Mm -hmm. And so far, we've sort of seen him joke around a lot. Mm -hmm. This was the most serious I think we've seen him get. And it was great to see him in that mode. It was also heartwarming to see Stuart and Lyndon's goodbye. I also just get so frustrated with shows when they mince words. When it's sort of implied, hey, I'm going to kill you if you don't do this. But they don't just outright say it. (laughs) And I think Forrest was mincing words a little bit. And Stuart shows up. Awesome Stuart unminces those words. I hope you were listening. Not to me, to Forrest. He'll kill you and he means it. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Yeah, I love that interaction between those two. It was great. Great acting on both parts. Yeah, agreed. Do you think we see more of Lyndon? I hope so. Could Lyndon work with Lily? That's what I'm assuming is going to happen. I think uh, Lyndon will shed some light on what's going on in the golden building yeah. to Lily. The only the only reason I doubt that is because Forrest can see the future. So if Lyndon was going to work with Lily, Forrest would have seen it already. But perhaps Lyndon has some way or some knowledge on how to make sure he sees the wrong universe. Right, right. Because Forrest has a blind spot right now where he doesn't believe in the multiverse. Mm-hmm. And or or at least he very much hates that theory and it has it has no place in devs. <laughs> so maybe Lyndon can somehow work with that. That could be interesting mm-hmm. if there's some clever twist where Forrest wonders how could he have not seen this, and then Lyndon says, "You were looking in the wrong universe." <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> well, Katie is not happy about Lyndon getting fired. Katie approaches Forrest and says, "You just fired." my most talented engineer. Forrest says that Lyndon introduced the multiverse theory here. There's no place for that here. Undermined everything. And then Forrest gets emotional again because Katie says it works. Forrest says, it does not work. It does not work. (laughs) (laughs) It's not my Jesus, and therefore it's not my Amaya. And every hair on her head does matter because he wants to see his daughter again. And he doesn't want to see some alternate reality version of his daughter. He wants to see his daughter. Then Katie says, I broke a rule today too. Katie applied Lyndon's algorithm, not just to sound waves, but now to light waves as well. And we see a very clear image of Forrest's daughter. And he says, oh, Christ. (laughs) (laughs) Not the first mention of Jesus in this episode. (laughs) And then he cries. Great scene. I I loved... I mean, as much as Forrest has been this emotional character, every time Nick Offerman goes into that mode, he just does such a great job of selling it. And it's so awesome to see him get to stretch into this range of acting because I think most of us know him from Parks and Rec. So Mm -hmm. you typically see him as a comedic actor. And here he is just nailing it. He can be menacing. He can be emotional. He's just... And he can be funny too. Mm -hmm. We've seen that side of him too. And so he's, he's great. Um, here is where we get it crystal clear. Amaya is Forrest's daughter. He says, not my Amaya. But my question is, what is he trying to accomplish here? I have to assume it's not just to see her again, right? I, I don't know. I have a feeling somehow they, they're going to, he wants to use this technology to bring her back somehow. But I don't know how. Yeah, it seems, it seems like everything would tell us that he can't bring her back. If there are the tram lines, if everything is deterministic, he already knows, even if there was a way to bring her back, he would already know whether or not he's successful in doing so. And in this episode, they hammer it home again. Whatever we see in the future, we can't change. Now, they do have the rule, don't look in the future. And who knows how often Forrest and Katie have broken that rule. Maybe Forrest hasn't looked far enough into the future to confirm whether or not he's successful. Now, 
I understand this to be they are not truly looking into the past. They're not interacting with the past. They're interpreting the past, extrapolating it based off of quantum mechanics and all this crazy stuff. So I don't think they can change the past. My crackpot crazy theory Mm -hmm. is maybe they can somehow extract his daughter's consciousness from the past. They talk about light waves. What is human consciousness made of? Not light waves, but maybe something on the quantum level that they can extract it and bring her into the present somehow. I don't know, just a crazy theory to throw out there because I do think he's trying to do something more than just see her again. Mm -hmm. I just can't figure out what it is, but I'm very intrigued to find out. Any other thoughts on this episode as a whole? Um, I, I still love Stuart, <laughs> and uh, I am very curious where Lyndon's story is going. I'm positive it's going to cross with Lily's. Right. And really excited to see what happens there. Yeah, agreed. I thought this episode was stronger than the third episode. I definitely was more invested in Lily's side of the story. But I am a little bit, I don't want to say impatient, but I am wondering where it's going because it seems like she's in a totally powerless position right now. In the authority of the police, she's about to be locked up. And so I'm very curious to see how she gets out of that, if she gets out of that. And then even if she does, where the hell does she go from there unless she can team up with Lyndon? And that would be a pretty awesome team up to see. It could only be made better if Stuart gets involved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just uh, other random thoughts. I'm finding this with any show I watch. Anytime I see characters shake hands or share a cigarette, I want to be like, what are you doing? Coronavirus. <laughs> it's so crazy how that is just in the top of mind no matter what you're watching. <laughs> but thankfully, we have shows like Devs to help us get through this uh, lockdown that we're in right now. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, other random thought. I read an article that said episodes of Devs come out at 6 a.m. Apparently not true. 12.01 a.m. today, this episode was available. So anybody who wanted to stay up for the new episodes on Thursday and didn't because of me, I apologize. (laughs) So this Wednesday night, next Wednesday, 11.59 p.m., wait a couple more minutes. Thursday morning, you'll get the new episode. Anyway, with that, Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified the next time we release a video or the next time we go live and you can be involved in the conversation. Speaking of which, if you have any theories, predictions, leave them in the comments below. We had some great conversation on the last video's comments. A lot of people have some pretty great theories. Shout out to Evan. So leave your comments, we'll get a discussion going, and see if we can figure out where all of this is going. Thanks for watching.